On January 29, 2021, California Governor Gavin Newsom reversed his initial decision to grant convicted killer Rodney Patrick McNeil parole. Nearly 24 years ago, Deborah Black Crow McNeil and her unborn child were brutally murdered by Mr. McNeil in Highland, California. In 2000, Mr. McNeil was initially convicted and sentenced to 30 years to life in prison for the murders. In March of 2020, Governor Gavin Newsom commuted Mr. McNeil's sentence, making him eligible for parole. On November 13th, 2020, an en banc parole board granted Mr. McNeil parole. After Deborah's family, District Attorney Jason Anderson, and members of the media expressed their opposition to the parole board's initial decision. Governor Gavin Newsom then reversed the board's decision. Mr. McNeil will remain in prison for now. Up next, District Attorney Jason Anderson. Thanks, Grace. Good morning. I'm Jason Anderson, District Attorney for San Bernardino County. Uh, we're here this morning uh, because we are pleased that the governor denied the parole uh, grant of double murder Rodney McNeil. Uh, to give you some background history in regards to McNeil, uh, he was initially convicted in 1999. He was sentenced to 30 years to life in May of 2000. Uh, in March of 20, uh, the governor commuted his sentence. Uh, and then in September of 20, uh, the parole board met uh, to grant him parole. Uh, it was actually a split decision. Uh, they had an en banc uh, hearing in which they determined that they granted him parole. The basis for that was that he no longer posed a risk of danger to the community. Uh, when we found that out, we wrote a letter to the governor indicating that we thought otherwise. Uh, part of that letter incorporated uh, who the real hero of this story is, which is uh, Chantel. Uh, she is the daughter and um, the sister of the victims in this particular case. Um, she's out of state, could not be here. We tried to get her in uh, virtually and we're not able to do that as a result of some technical difficulties. But when Chantel learned that um, the uh, murder of her sister and mother was going to be released, uh, she partnered with our uh, lifer unit. Uh, my colleague Connie Lasky is present here and will be able to answer any questions in regards to that. Uh, but uh, the issue came down to uh, we were concerned that he would continue to pose a danger of risk. Um, we advocated uh, for this. Uh, in fact, uh, my colleague Connie Lasky was present at the parole board hearing, as was Chantel, and advocated of this. But despite that, the parole board made what we thought was a poor decision based upon the record. Uh, fortunately, Governor Newsom, uh, as a result of Chantel's uh, uh, efforts in this particular case, uh, reevaluated it. And I just want to go into a little bit in terms of what Chantel did in terms of uh, increasing the record, I believe, that the governor had uh, to make his decision in this particular case. Um, she uh, made the governor aware of the impact that it's had on her. Uh, she uh, pointed out that her mom uh, is Native American, uh, Deborah Black Crow McNeil uh, and baby girl McNeil. Uh, and uh, she went to the tribe in South Dakota. Uh, she got advocates there, uh, senators in South Dakota, tribal leaders in South Dakota uh, to encompass the record in this particular case. And we believe that that was uh, a significant part of making the difference. Uh, I can tell you that the governor's reason uh, for overturning the parole board was the fact that uh, McNeil had a history of domestic violence, not only with uh, Deborah but in other relationships. Uh, despite the fact that for some reason the prison never determined that he had actually uh, a misconduct record, uh, there were admissions made at the parole hearing where Ms. Lasky was present, uh, that he actually engaged in um, uh, illegal cell phone and narcotic trading. Uh, and we believe that was uh, appropriate. Uh, I can tell you this, that uh, one of the things that will continue to consider, uh, concern us uh, is that uh, over time in the last 22 years, Mr. McNeil has given at least three different versions of who may have committed these murders. All of those have been reviewed uh, and been debunked by appellate courts. Uh, and uh, he's never taken responsibility uh, for what he's done. Uh, Chantel continued to point that out and I believe made the point that uh, there's no way to have true rehabilitation for anybody who you would consider for parole unless they actually admit what they did. I'm not saying that that is going to make this particular individual deserving of parole ever, uh, but that is a component that we will always point out uh, in addition to what Chantel uh, has pointed out. Uh, her courage and resolve uh, has been extraordinary in this in terms of what she's been able to do. Uh, and I would have loved to have had her uh, on the screen to be able to indicate uh, how thankful she is to Connie Lasky, uh, how thankful she has been uh, to our office to be able to help facilitate her uh, advocating on behalf of her sister and her mother. 
I think the value that goes into uh, having Chantel present at a parole hearing with the assistance of a prosecutor uh, is something that is being currently reviewed. And I believe this case, among any other case, really indicates the value of why the law allows the victims to be present, to memorialize uh, their loved ones, to talk about the impact that it's had on their lives, but to also have a prosecutor who's used to uh, the procedures and the protocols that parole uses in order to assist victims uh, to advocate against parole in particular circumstances. And finally, I, want, I do want to thank Governor Newsom for uh, having the discernment and the consideration to look at the individual facts and circumstances in this particular case. Uh, and that's ultimately what this comes down to. We don't think that there are any victims or any defendants uh, that uh, are similar. Every case is different. This particular case certainly was different from the factors that I've talked about already that Chantel pointed out uh, in terms of um, the heritage of her mom. Uh, and the other concerns that Chantel had as a result of the relationship that her mother, uh, the domestic violence relationship that her mother had uh, with uh, McNeil in this particular case. Uh, but in order to, um, uh, you can't have rigid policies and protocols when it comes to making a determination about the individuality, the humanity, and the individual facts and circumstances of a case. And, and that's really, I think, where the power of Chantel came through uh, in terms of, uh, of getting that across to the governor. So. Uh, on behalf of our office, certainly we thank Chantel tremendously. Uh, we also want to thank the governor for considering this uh, and realizing that the, the decision made by the, 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 the Board of Parole was incorrect. Uh, I can indicate that uh, Ms. Lasky has informed me, and if anybody has any specific questions, uh, you can ask her that uh, as a result of the procedure, uh, it's likely that Mr. McNeil may become eligible for parole again within six months. Uh, because uh, his sentence has been commuted, it now is in that life tail. Uh, we will continue to oppose it again, uh, not only on behalf of Chantel, she certainly will, but as I've said, there's been no indication at all for taking responsibility uh, for this particular action. And so um, uh, we again want to thank uh, Chantel, uh, her entire family, her relatives uh, who have made this day happen, and we're thrilled that we have some good news to report. Uh, that a double murderer will remain in prison. So uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to ask. Uh, Ms. Lasky, do you have anything that you would like to add in terms of procedurally? Not procedurally, but I can indicate, since we weren't able to get Chantel on uh, camera today, I did speak to her on the phone on Saturday when we received the email um, from the governor's office that had been reversed. I did speak to her on the phone to let her know that it had been reversed. And for a good minute or two, she was speechless and then was very overjoyed to hear the news. So even though she can't be here today, she is very pleased with this outcome. Thanks, Connie. Nobody has any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a couple questions. Um, according to the press release here, the governor said that McNeil has not yet sufficiently mitigated his risk for domestic violence. You've talked about the fact that he hasn't even taken responsibility for the crime. Um, not to get into the mind of the parole board, but are you concerned that if he all of a sudden says, okay, I take responsibility, they're just gonna change their mind? Or is there other components to maybe his behavior behind bars that makes you concerned about the fact that this could still be a violent individual? Well, unfortunately, I think that their mind's already been made up because the parole board is the one who decided to grant him parole despite the fact that there was not a full recognition of the domestic violence history. Fortunately, the governor stepped in and made that analysis on, on his own. Um, I, I can only say that, that one of the parole board uh, members, uh, when it was a split, was concerned about the fact that he'd never actually taken responsibility for the murders. Uh, the other parole board member, did, that did not seem to be a concern. And so as it goes forward, there may be a different uh, makeup of the board uh, that makes a determination. So we will always point out the fact that there's never been responsibility taken for the underlying crime. So that is a concern. And that's why we are glad that the governor is taking into account these other considerations beyond what parole considered in making this determination. And you're saying that he could come up again and in a few months. Yes. For people who don't understand how the process works, can you explain that? Uh, because of the process in which his particular case is at, the uh, determinant term has been commuted. So he was to do 30 years, he only did 22. And now it is a situation in which it's a process that the parole and the prisons control in terms of when he'll come up again. Ms. Lasky has informed me that it's uh, likely within six months. 
uh, that he'll come up again. Now, whether that's a consistent pattern from here on out, we won't know. But we would suspect that this summer we may face this again, and we'll point those same issues out. And then lastly, what, what makes you think that he's still a um, potential risk for violence? Uh, despite the fact that he had no written uh, record of misconduct, there's our admissions in the last parole hearing where Ms. Lasky was present and Ms., uh, where Chantel was present uh, that we know that he's trafficked in illegal cell phones and narcotics while he's been in prison. And you've got to remember, this is an individual who you know, previously was involved um, with a, a job with probation and had roots and, and frankly knew better. Uh, even before he went into prison. And so you know, it's those types of issues that we will consider, we will continue to point out. You know, those are, those are intricacies and nuances that aren't going to be pointed out unless someone like Ms. Lasky is present uh, and we keep them at the forefront in terms of what, what's the conduct. I'm not necessarily interested in what uh, the parole board is actually marking down in terms of some report. I don't know what their threshold is. Uh, my threshold is is that if you continue to engage in illegal conduct, it doesn't appear as if you're ready to be out in society, you're going to create a danger. My name is Chantel Danae Haynes. I am the daughter of Deborah Marie Black Crow and the collateral victim of Rodney Patrick McNeil. I was absolutely shocked when I got the news that Governor Gavin Newsom decided to reverse the parole grant for Rodney. I've been fighting about 23 years tirelessly to retain justice for my mother, Deborah Blackrow, and to, to get this news that he decided to reverse the parole grant is just a relief. It's uh, we won. We won a battle. Finally, <laughs> we won a battle.